famous last words purported to be deathbed quotes. Oscar Wilde who said, either this wallpaper goes or I do. <laughs> or a man named Paul, Paul Claudel who said, doctor, do you think it could have been the sausage? Well, our scripture passage today comes from Jesus' last words. A section of the Gospel of John that's called the Farewell Discourse, given by Jesus to his disciples immediately following the Last Supper, on the night before his crucifixion. Jesus knows he's about to leave his friends, and so he lays out these very profound words including our passage for today. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Now this is not an easy commandment, especially when you think about the fact that the Christian church is divided by so many issues. The definition of marriage, abortion, immigration, worship styles, just to name a few. And there are no easy answers to these questions. But the early disciples were divided also. There were some disciples who were reflective. They were deep thinkers. And then we know about Peter, at least one of the disciples was impetuous. There were fishermen, there was a tax man, and there was a zealot who wanted to overthrow the government. And yet Jesus said to them, love one another. And they did. The book of Acts records that they were all in one accord. It's easy to love those who are like us or who advocate for the same positions as we do. It's much more difficult to love those who are on the opposite side from us. But that is what Jesus called us to do, love one another. And this is not a commandment where he's asking us to feel something all warm and fuzzy. Because love is something you do. It is an action. It is a commitment. And so today I have identified three action words, three ways in which we can love one another by serving, caring, and forgiving. The first is by serving one another. And so let's back up from our passage today and look at the beginning of chapter 13. Look at the context of Jesus' words. Just before the Last Supper, the Passover meal, Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. Now, just as we know it's important to wash our hands before a meal, so in Jesus' time it was important to have one's feet washed with sandals as the footwear and dusty robes, feet would get very, very dirty. And being a good host meant that you would ensure that your guests' feet were washed before a meal. And of course it was a job for the lowliest of slaves because it was such a dirty job. Jesus got up from the table took off his robe and wrapped a towel around his waist. He took on the role of the lowliest slave, and he washed the feet of his disciples. And then he explained, You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. God calls each one of us to step down to the lowliest place and serve one another. And so what can you do to serve someone this week? And I encourage you to think and pray about that and see if God leads you to serve someone that is particularly difficult for you to love. 
The second way that we can love one another is by forgiving one another. Being willing to let go of feelings of anger. Maybe you've heard this story. During World War II, Hitler commanded all the religious groups to unite because he wanted to control them. Well, among the brethren assemblies, about half of them complied and half of them did not. And of course, those who went along with the order had a much easier time. Those who did not were terribly persecuted. And in almost every family of those who resisted, someone died in a concentration camp. So when the war was over, feelings of bitterness ran deep between the groups. And there was a lot of tension. Finally, they decided that it couldn't go on any longer. And so all of the leaders got together at a retreat center to try to bring some healing to the situation. And what they did first is very interesting to me. For several days, each person spent hours in prayer examining his or her own heart in light of Christ's commandments. And then they came together. And when one of the participants was asked, what did you do then? He said, we were just one. Because you see, as they confessed their bitterness, as they confessed their anger, and they submitted to the will of God, then the Holy Spirit was able to bring a spirit of unity among them. Love filled their hearts and dissolved their hatred and dissension. Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. So in times of strong disagreement, when we let go of our hurts, when we let go of what we think are our rights, and when we submit to the will of God, then it's love that prevails. And it presents to the world the mark of a true believer in Jesus Christ. Love one another by forgiving. And then the third way is to care for one another. Now certainly we can do this in practical ways by helping to supply needs. But it goes beyond that as well to walking with people in difficult times. Writer and lecturer Leo Viscaglia once talked about the fact that he was asked to judge a contest. And the contest was to find the most caring child. And the winner of the contest was a four-year-old boy whose next-door neighbor was an elderly gentleman that had lost his wife of many years. Well, one day, upon seeing the man cry, the little boy went over into the man's yard, went up the porch, and climbed on the man's lap and just sat there. Later on, his mother asked him, what did you say? And the little boy said, nothing. I just helped him cry. The church is about caring enough to walk with others who are struggling, to walk with others who have needs. The church is about helping each other, church members loving one another regardless. Anything less than that isn't the church. And so what might it look like for us to love one another as the church? There's a powerful story that's told by Juan Carlos Ortiz, he's a well-known pastor and author, and for many years he was on the staff of the Crystal Cathedral, but he also founded several churches in Argentina. Well, he tells the story about the day 
that he was looking out over his congregation that he had pastored for many years. And it was a Sunday, and it was almost time for the sermon. And of course, he had prayed about the sermon, and he had spent many hours crafting the sermon. And the title of the message was rather simple, Love One Another. But he thought that message was very important given the spiritual condition of the congregation. So as Pastor Ortiz tells the story, he stood up to walk to the pulpit to deliver his sermon when God spoke to him. One. Well, he wondered a little bit at God's timing because the conversation was taking place as he was walking towards the pulpit. Yes, Lord. Juan, how many times have you preached on the subject of loving one another? I don't know, Lord, maybe a dozen or so. How many times in other sermons have you exhorted your congregation to love one another? I don't know, Lord, maybe a dozen times also. Has it done any good? Well, by that time, he was at the pulpit right when the conversation with God ended. And the words of the Lord were ringing in his ears. And he said to himself, I have preached dozens of sermons on love, and indeed, what good have they done? This congregation still spends more time looking after their own interests rather than the interests of others. They barely know one another. They are not friends with one another outside of their own circles of friendship. Juan Carlos stood silent in the pulpit, and his congregation also waited in silence for him to begin the sermon. Pastor Ortiz opened his mouth and he said, love one another. And then he turned around and went back to his seat. Well, people started looking at each other, thinking that they had missed something. They were accustomed to a sermon of nearly an hour rather than one of three seconds. And after what seemed like an eternity, Pastor Ortiz walked back to the pulpit. So the people repositioned themselves, thinking that now the pastor would deliver the message. He opened his mouth and again he said, love one another. Then he went back to his seat and sat down. Well, heads began to turn, and there was murmuring going on in the congregation. People weren't sure what was happening. Finally, Pastor Ortiz got up again and went to the pulpit. And sure enough, once again, he said, love one another. And then he went back and sat down. Now people really began talking amongst themselves. Asking each other, what was going on? What was the pastor trying to do? Until finally, an elder stood up. And the elder said, I think I understand what Pastor Ortiz means. He wants me to love you. And he pointed to someone sitting behind him in the pew. He said, but how can I love you when I don't even know you? And with that, he began to talk and have conversation with the people sitting behind him. At that point, others got up from their pews and began to introduce themselves to people they had seen but didn't really know. And so phone numbers were exchanged and dinner invitations were extended. Arrangements were made for financial assistance where it was needed. One man arranged employment for someone who was out of work, and someone else offered an apartment to a homeless family. With just three simple words, Pastor Ortiz delivered his most powerful sermon. Love one another. In times of disagreement, 
Presbyterian pastor David Ezekiel said, Love does not suggest that we ignore our differences, but it does suggest that we respect one another, acknowledging our differences. Love means committing ourselves to the messy, frustrating, and exhausting work of reconciliation. Without destroying one another and the community of which we are a part. In a community of faith, the goal is never simply victory, but the preservation of Christian witness and mission. And so to close, I'd like for us to take a few moments for silent prayer. Because I believe that God is speaking to each one of us here today. And so as we have this time of silence, ask God how he would have you respond to this word. Take a pencil from the pew rack and write down on your bulletin what you hear the Lord saying to you. I'm serious. Take a pencil. I don't see anybody taking a pencil. Okay. Take a few moments now, and it may be that God just instructs you to write down the name of a person that you know you need to love in a practical way. Let's take a few moments for prayer. <laughs> 